Yeah, so here we have a question from hybridization and let's see what the statement says. Which of the following molecules has hybridization involving D orbitals, right? So you have S, P, D, F orbital. So the question is talking about the D orbitals, fine. So we are going to look for the hybridization of the central element and how we're going to calculate that with the formula 1 by 2 V plus M minus C plus A. The sweet and the smart formula where V stands for the valence electron of the central atom, right? Okay. The M stands for the monovalent, monovalent atoms, monovalent atoms, right? For example, you have hydrogen, you have fluorine, you have chlorine, bromine, iodine. Okay. C. C is the charge of the cations. Charge of cations, right? Okay. So, the charge of the cation is obviously positive and you have to subtract that. And A is going to be the charge of the anions. And anions have the negative charge and you are going to add that to the formula. Perfect. And this whole number has to be divided by 2. Fine. Let's start with SF4. So, SF4. Sulfur is like 6 valence electrons. So, let's calculate it. 1 by 2, 6. And fluorine is obviously monovalent. And 6 plus 4, there is no charge, 0, 0. So, 6 plus 4, 10 by 2 is 5. 5, what do you mean by 5? 5 means sp3 dehybridized. That means one of the d orbital of S is going to participate in the bonding here and yes d orbital is taking place in the hybridization perfect moving on to xcf2 let's calculate it for this 1 by 2 xenon noble gas valence electron obviously 8 and 2 fluorine atoms so 2 is going to be added there is no charge neutral xcf2 so 8 by 2 10 by 2 is going to be 5 again and this is again sp3 dehybridization so yes D is there as well. CLF3. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it over here. 1 by 2. Chlorine. The 17th group element. So, 7 valence electron. Fluorine is again a monovalent atom. 7 plus 3. 10 by 2. 5 again. So, yes. SP3D is coming all over again and again. And yes. In CLF3 also, you have the participation of D orbital from the chlorine atom. Right? So, the right answer is going to be D for Delhi or D for Dehradun. Yes, SF4, XEF2, CLF3, all of them have the central element with D orbital participating in hybridization. And with that, we conclude this question. D is the right answer. Thank you. Yeah, so here we have a question based on the strength of bases and let's see what the statement says. Ammonium hydroxide. Okay. And what is the formula for ammonium hydroxide? Ammonium NH4 plus hydroxide OH minus. So the formula becomes NH4OH. Okay. Is a weak base because, and we have four options. Before we jump onto the options, let's understand the idea behind the strength of bases. How do you decide something is a weak base or a strong base, right? So basically, what is a base? Something which generally provides hydroxide ion. Right, okay. And what is a strong base? A strong base is something which is going to provide you much more number of hydroxide ion, where the concentration of hydroxide ion is going to be high. That is going to be a strong base. And the reverse of that, what is going to be a weak base? That is going to be some, some compound where the number of hydroxide ion is going to be less. If concentration of hydroxide ion is going to be less in the aqueous solution, then obviously the base is going to be weak base. Okay. Now when you say the hydroxide ion concentration is less, so how do you come to know that? With the help of Kb, dissociation constant of base. If the value of dissociation constant of base is less, less, that means value of dissociation constant is less. That means the base is going to weakly ionize. It is going to break less. Now read these statements. Now read the options. It has a low vapor density. Vapor density has nothing to do with the strengths of the bases. No, it is only slightly ionized. Perfect. Going with the flow. 
डिसोसिएशन कॉन्स्टेंट के बी दैल्यू इज लेस दैट मीन्स इट इज डिसोसिएटिंग लेस दैट मीन्स इट इज गोइंग टू आयोनाइज स्लाइटली लिटिल बिट आयोनाइजेशन ओके सो येस बी इज करेक्ट ऑप्शन सी इट इज नॉट अ हाइड्रोक्साइड ऑफ एनी मेटल नो सी दैट्स नॉट ट्रू वाई बिकॉज सम मेटल हाइड्रोक्साइड आर ऑल्सो वीक लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल बेरिलियम हाइड्रोक्साइड सो यू कैन नॉट से दैट सी इज इन करेक्ट it has low density again density has nothing to do with the strength of bases so yes the most appropriate option is option b it is only slightly ionized that is why ammonium hydroxide is a weak base and with that we close this question thank you all right so here we have a question based on the n factor calculation that is from the redox reactions and let's see what the question says find the n factor of feso4 in the following chemical change and the change is ferrous sulfate to ferric oxide right fe2o3 so the idea is let's first calculate the oxidation number of iron sulfur oxygen and let's see what is going to change so what do i observe is sulfate is like so4 minus 2 right so obviously it is a neutral molecule then it is going to be fe plus 2 right if you if you just want to go by the conventional method let's assume the oxidation number of fe is x then sulfate is like minus 2 and this is neutral so it is going to be zero from here x is coming out to be plus 2 that is the oxidation state of fe fine moving on to fe2o3 uh there is no sulfur and we have oxygen on the reactant side oxygen is minus 2 on the product side i again see oxygen on minus 2 there is no change in the oxidation state of oxygen so the only change that is going to come is from the iron fe right so what do i observe is let's let's criss cross this so o minus 2 and fe is going to be plus 3 so if i just write that way plus 3 minus 2 or if you want to go by the conventional method so if i assume Fe on the product side to be y, so I have two y plus three oxygen with minus two is equal to zero, so y is going to be six by two, yeah, three, okay, plus three. Yes, so iron is going from plus two to plus three. So how do you calculate the n factor? The formula is n factor is equal to the number of atoms that is going a change in the oxidation state on the reactant side. multiplied by that change in oxidation state what do i say let me write that number of fe atoms on reactant side right don't forget this we are going to calculate the n factor for feso4 so number of fe atoms on the reactant side that is in feso4 into change in oxidation state right just the difference that is what we are looking for Okay, so what? How many number of Fe atoms you have? One, and what is the change? Three minus two. Okay, three minus two is again one. One and one is one. Answer is going to be number one. Yes, option B, B for Bombay, is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, we conclude this question. Thank you. All right. So I don't know why I am feeling so hot right now. maybe because of the category of the question the question is from thermo thermodynamics and a lot of heat is involved in the question let's see what the question says 3000 joule of heat see that's what i was talking about is given to a gas at constant pressure of 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per meter square okay if its volume increases by 10 liter during the process find the change in the internal energy of the gas okay volume increases that means work is done by the gas okay so you have internal energy you have some heat you are talking about some work done that means that reminds me of the first law of thermodynamics right so what is the first law of thermodynamics So what is the equation for first law of thermodynamics it is nothing but change in internal energy is heat change plus the work done it is the summation of heat change in the process and the work done in the process the summation is going to give you the change in the internal energy of the system right okay so we are looking for the internal energy change 
we have to look for the heat change. 3000 joule of heat is given to a gas. That means heat is absorbed by the gas. That means heat is added to the system. That means the heat is going to be plus 3000 joule. Remember the sign convention. When heat is leaving the system, that is subtracted from the system, the sign is going to be minus. When heat is added to the system, the sign is going to be plus. Okay. Now, work done. Work done is like minus P external delta V. So, if I just put that way, minus of pressure. Pressure is 2 into 10 to the power 5 and delta V increases by 10 liter. If I just multiply this by 10 and try to solve this, let's solve this further. 3000 minus 2 into 10 to the power 6 and answer is going to be like what? If you just observe carefully, none of the option is going to match. Oh my God, what is this? Because you have committed or rather I have committed a blunder here. And what is that? The unit of the volume. When everything is, is an SI unit, the heat is an SI unit, the work done, the pressure is an SI unit, then the value of volume has to be in SI unit. So you have to convert this 10 liter into meter cube and 1 liter is 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube. So 10 liter will be 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube. So this was the error that we have made. So let's correct it. So it will be like what? 10 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter cube is equal to 10 liter, right? So I, if I just replace this 10 liter with 10 to the power minus 2 meter cube and then I try to solve this further, 5 minus 2, 10 to the power 3. Now this will be 3000 minus 2000 joules. Everything in SI unit. So the answer is going to be 1000 joule plus 1000 joule. Now if you match with the options, of course, B for Bombay or B for Baijus is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, the visuals for this question is over. Thank you. All right, so here we have an awesome numerical from the gaseous state and let's see how we're going to do this all together. So the question says, what is the density of wet air? Density, wet air in gram per liter, okay, which have a partial pressure of water of 22.5 torr at 1 atm and 300 kelvin. Okay, okay. So this is the piece of information that we have. What is given to us is vapor pressure of water is 30 torr and the average molar mass of air is 29 grams. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So you have to figure out the density of the wet air, right? So if I just use the formula PV is equal to NRT and if I just write the formula of moles as given weight upon molar mass and I divide volume here and RT, this will be your P. Weight by volume is going to be density, molar mass, RT. So from here, can I say density is going to be nothing but PM by RT, right? Okay. P is the pressure. Do we have the pressure? Yes. 1 atm is the total pressure. And molar mass of the wet air, right? What is given to you as 29 gram is the molar mass of the dry air and which has a component of water vapor okay okay the pressure of water is given 22.5 okay we are going to use this data to somehow reach to molar mass of wet air this is what we have to find out and r is your universal gas constant and temperature is 300 kelvin that is given to you okay so we are just looking for the molar mass of wet air right for that first we should know the component or the percentage of water vapors in the air, right? So if I just say 1 ADM is 760 torr, okay. If I just convert 1 ADM into 760 torr, out of that I have 22.5 torr of water vapors, right? So if I just calculate the percentage of water vapors, can I just say it will be like 22.5 upon 760 and because it is percentage, multiply by 100, okay. So, if I just calculate this percentage, 0, 0, 225 by 76, 
225 by 76. I cannot take the approximation. Why? Because we are just in the beginning of the calculation. An approximation here can be very dangerous. So, calculate it further. 76, 225 is going to be like what? 7 to 14, 7, 3, 21. 3, 6, 18. No, 3 is going to be higher. We have to go with 2, 6 to 12, 7 to 14, 15, 5 to 3, 12, 5, 15, 7, 73. Okay. Moving further, 0, 7. This is going to be 9, of course. 9, 6, 54, 5, 9, 7, 63, 68, 10, 4, 6, 13, 12, 8, 4, and 6. Okay. 46. This is going to be okay. So if you just Take one more zero, one more decimal place, 760, 76, 460, 76, 75, somewhere around 7, 2.97, right? Okay, so if I just take it 2.97, or let's do one thing, let's take it approximately as 3%, right? 2.97 is very close to 3. So if percentage of water is 3, then the percentage of dry air is obviously going to be 100 minus 3, that is 97%. Now, if I just calculate the molar mass of wet air, it is going to be percentage of water, that is 3% into mass of water, right? Plus percentage of dry air, 97% into molar mass or the average molar mass of dry air that is given 9, 29, 29 gram per mole, right? Okay, if I just calculate this further, 18 into 3 is 54 plus 97 into 29 9763 6 81 87 7 to 14 18 19 3 11 19 2 2 9 1 3 and you have to add 54 to this 4 3 7 okay this will be like 7 6 9 2 divided by 100 29.67 this is the average molar mass of wet air okay let's go back to the main calculation so if i just have this value as 29.67 now let's do it for the density pm by rt pressure is 1 atm now you want it in gram per liter okay so the molar mass 29.67 r 0 0.083 0 0.083 liter atm per kelvin per mole and temperature is 300. So can I just write 0 0.083 as 1 by 12, right? Approximately 1 by 12 is 0 0.0833333. So I'm approximately taking 0 0.083 as 1 by 12. And now if I just solve this, 12, 2, 50, 25, 25 in the denominator. Let's multiply this by 4 and 4, numerator and denominator. Not going to make any difference. So density will be 29.67 into 4 divided by 25 into 4 is 100. This is just to make the calculation simple. So if I just multiply this, uh, 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 4, 3, 12, 7, 4, 28, uh, 2, 6, 4, 24, 26, 2, 9, 4, 36, 38, 4, 2, 8, 11, 1, 1, Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By 100, right? So this is approximately coming out to be 1.18. Approximately 1.18. So if I just in grams per liter, right? With some approximation. Okay. Now if you match with the options, 1.16 close to 1.18. 2.16 very far away. 3.16 is pretty far. 4.16 is further far away. So the closest possible answer to our to what we have calculated is 1.164. So yes, A for Australia is going to be the right answer to this question. And with that, we conclude this question. Thank you.